let's see if we can get some handle on the geometry of what exactly coordinates and the coordinate map relative to a basis is doing. Um, so here I have three vectors sitting in R3. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to take v1 and v2. And those are going to be the basis for a subspace. Now the subspace they're a basis of is just the plane that they contain, right? The plane through the origin that contains those two vectors. And that's this plane. Okay. Now you can see we have a third vector v. That's this one up here. Uh, that is also contained in this plane. And so, um, so v should have coordinates relative to this basis v1, v2. Um, in other words, you know, since v is in this plane, we can express it as a linear combination of v1 and v2. Uh, so uh, I've sort of set things up so that the so that um, GeoGebra is doing the calculation to find the coordinates, and, and here's the result. So this vector here in parentheses here, this is the vector v, and. Uh, it turns out its coordinates relative to this basis are 0.75 and 1.87. But I mean, what, what does that mean, really? Um, well, to understand what these coordinates mean, we, we really need to understand how it is that these two vectors determine a coordinate system on this plane. Um, as, we, as we look at this, right, we have this 3D view of of this subspace, this plane that contains v1 and v2. But over here on the right, we have sort of a, a top-down view of, of the subspace um, so that you know, we're looking at it at, at right angles here, like this. It's, uh, we're actually, I guess we're looking at it from the other side. So it's like that. OK, right. So this view on the, on the right is just uh, this particular view of this plane. So you know, I'll rotate the 3D view, but just keep in mind that um, on the right, we're seeing this nice perpendicular view from this particular angle. OK, so how is it that these, this basis determines a coordinate system on this subspace? Well, what we can do is, uh, right, sort of what's happening is the basis vectors determine what your, where, uh, the direction that the coordinate axes point for this coordinate system. And uh, the length of these vectors sort of determines how big a unit is in that direction. Uh, to demonstrate this, let's um, draw some coordinate, or some, they aren't coordinate axes exactly, but well, let me just draw them and you'll, you'll see what I mean. So these green lines, uh, these tell us, so these, these lines are parallel to v2. And they're being, I, I have it set up so that there's one line drawn every uh, space corresponding to a distance of v1, right? So uh, what these lines mean is that every point along one of these lines all have the same v, all have the same coordinate, I'll have the same first coordinate, right? So um, every point along this line here has first coordinate 1. Every point along this line here has first coordinate 2. Every point along this line has first coordinate 0. Every point along this line has first coordinate minus 1. You can see that same thing over here. So this is first coordinate 1. This line is first coordinate 2. This line is first coordinate 0, and so on. OK, um, these are essentially, you know, in the xy plane, these are just like the vertical lines, the lines perpendicular to the x-axis, right? In the xy plane, lines perpendicular to the vertical axis all have the same x-coordinate. It's the same thing here. Um, except, right, these lines don't actually have to be perpendicular to v, v1. That's one of the bits of flexibility that, uh, that linear algebra gives us. OK, so um, what about the other coordinate direction? So that's these red lines. Now these red lines, they're all parallel to v1. And you can see their spacing is determined by the length of v2. So every point along this red line 
has second coordinate 1. Every point along this line has second coordinate 2, and so on. Right? Second coordinate 0, second coordinate minus 1. And over here on this uh, version of the picture, second coordinate 1, second coordinate 2, second coordinate 3, and so on. Uh, so you can see that v2, it's, uh, v2, well, let's look at v1. v1 itself, it lies along this green line, but that's the green line made up of points whose first coordinate is uh, 1. So the first coordinate of v1 is 1. And the second coordinate, well, it lies along this red line, but that red line is the red line for um, vectors whose second coordinate is 0. So the coordinates for v1 relative to the basis v1, v2 are 1, 0, which makes sense because v1 is 1 times itself plus 0 times v2. So um, right, those coordinates, 1, 0, uh, display v1 as a linear combination of v1 and v2. Same thing for v2. It lies along the line corresponding to first coordinate 0 and second coordinate 1. So its coordinates relative to this basis are 0, 1. And that makes sense because v2 is 0 times v1 plus 1 times v2. So now let's, uh, let's see how this, how this coordinate system that we have set up measures, or how the coordinates tell you that v is a, tell you how v is a, a linear combination of v1 and v2. So uh, v, I mean, I have this set up so I can move v. So let me put it in a convenient place here. Um, so if v is right here, okay, that's close enough. Uh, you can you can see that v is v1 plus twice v2 because v2 is one step this way and then another step this this way. So um, for this particular v. Uh, it's v1 plus twice v2. And the coordinates are, the first coordinate is 1, which is telling us that we have you know, one copy of v1. And the second coordinate is 2. So one copy of v1 and two copies of v2. And sure enough, v is 1 times v1 plus 2 times v2. So you can see the coordinates are just telling you which multiples of the basis vector you need to produce uh, the vector that you're asking about. right? Um, now, the thing is, uh, the basis that you choose, so it, it's obvious that if you change the vector you're asking about, you change the coordinates. That, that's obvious. Something that isn't so obvious is that the basis that you choose also uh, influences the coordinates. Right? If we changed these basis vectors, for example, if we made v1 half as long, that's not going to change uh, that's not going to change what this subspace is, right? As long as I choose v1 and v2 to span this subspace, I won't be changing this subspace. So if I shrink v1, oh, I can't do it there. I have to do it over here for arcane geogebra reasons. So if I move v1 down to here, you can see that the coordinate system has changed, right? Even though the plane that I'm spanning hasn't changed. Uh, well, it hasn't changed much. I accidentally changed it a little. But the coordinate system has changed because now a step in the v1 direction is half as long as it used to be. That means that to get to this vector v, right, this vector v hasn't changed. It's still the same vector. But to get to produce this vector as a linear combination of v1 and v2, now I have to take two steps in the v1 direction and then two steps in the v2 direction. And so now its coordinates are 2, 2, uh, almost. Um, so the vectors that you, uh, the vectors that we choose for our basis influence the coordinate system, and that changes the coordinates, even if the vector that we're talking about uh, doesn't change. 